Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another meal prep. I have a few fun recipes for you all today and I'm going to be showing you how I can pumpkin. In my last video, I showed you all my food cellar and where I keep all of that. So if you missed that, I will leave the link for that video below. But I also got a lot of requests on how to can pumpkin and I successfully was able to winter over some pumpkins in my cellar and I'm just getting to the last of them to finish canning them up so that we can enjoy all of the great pumpkin recipes throughout this next year. So to start out my day, I decided to make some sticky buns. If you guys have been around for a while, you know that this recipe is my mom's famous sticky bun recipe. If you make this, you, oh, you're gonna be thanking me for ever and a day because it is the best <laughs> recipe ever. Two years ago, I actually asked my mom to make these for me instead of having a birthday cake. That is how good they really are. So I will leave the recipe written out in the description box below, but it's pretty simple. You start out with your yeast and you don't need to be scared of yeast if you've never used it before. You just add it to a little bit of warm water and then you'll follow the rest of the instructions. Now, the secret ingredient, the secret sauce to this recipe is those dried potato flakes that I just put in the mixing bowl. So you just wanna find in your store the dried mashed potatoes that you would mix up. Obviously, you don't want any with garlic in it or something like that, but if you just get a butter-flavored dried mashed potato flakes, that is what makes these sticky buns so gooey and soft and just delicious. So once you have the first few ingredients in the mixer, or if you could be doing this by hand, um, you'll just need to look up how to mix up dough by hand since there is a few steps to that. It's not difficult but I like using my dough hook on my mixer. So after I had those first ingredients, I added the flour in and got it to a great consistency where you know you can really work with it. So now I went ahead and sat it on the oven that I had preheating because yeast loves that warmth. It needs it to rise and I just covered it with a kitchen linen. And now we're gonna work on making the goo part of these sticky buns. And again, it's really simple. There I'm using some of my canned butter. I know that was a question that you all have is how I do that. So I'll be sharing that at some point. But this is a great use for the canned butter because you're gonna be melting it down, adding in some other things to make that gooey part on the bottom of the sticky bun. So I actually put the pans in the oven and just let the butter melt and then pulled it out and as you can see the butter's melted all over the pan. I'm adding a little bit of water just to give it a little more moisture so that the gooeyness can blend together. And then you're going to see me adding some vanilla and also some brown sugar. And you could mix this up in a bowl and dump it across your pan. My mom just always does it right on the pan and then just kind of swirls it all together and lets it kind of, um, get melted. I really think the reason that she does that is probably because the butter stays the warmest. If you were to dump all the butter into a bowl to mix this together, it's not going to dissolve the brown sugar quite as well. So you may end up with a bit more of a crunch to your sticky part of your sticky bun. I want to say a big thank you to AliExpress for sponsoring today's video. AliExpress is your one-stop shop for so many different items that provide better choices, better prices.
I can't believe what I got for just one dollar on my AliExpress order. If you pick any three items, you can get them all for just 99 cents and enjoy free shipping on everything. No coupons or promotion codes are required. Just put three items added to your cart and you will see the discount price at checkout. All three items must be purchased together in the same order to get a discounted price. But please note that this special is only available for new users. Quantities are limited. First come, first serve. I enjoy their drinkware and drinkware accessories, their home options, and their home decor. By the way, the discount can only be seen on AliExpress mobile app or their mobile website. The variety of items offered on their apps is absolutely huge. You have things from personal care items to makeup items and like I said, home items, even electronics and much, much more. As you can see on the app, there is something for everyone on AliExpress. So remember, pick any three items for 99 cents and free shipping for new users. Quantities are limited and available on a first come, first serve basis. So check out the link in the description box below to download the app and to shop for yourself. All right, back to these delicious sticky buns. So now that it's risen and it only takes 20 minutes, I know some bread recipes, it's a very long time for the bread to rise, but because of those potato flakes in there, they love that yeast. This is a really, really easy dough recipe to work with. So you're gonna split it in half, and I have a dough cutter there that I just split it in half. Then you're gonna grab some butter, smear it all over it, add some cinnamon and brown sugar, and then we'll be rolling these up. And <gasps> brown sugar. Why is there butter on there? Because that's what it makes the bread, the bread part, the dough part of the cinnamon rolls taste really, really soft and flaky if there's butter in there. Mm -hmm. Dough, dough. Mm. I'm gonna poke it. I put, sugar. that's brown sugar. <gasps> brown sugar. Brown sugar. Brown sugar. I took a little pinch of it. I took a little pinch of it. It's good with sugar. Yeah, a little. It's a little bit like making soft pretzels. Yep. I like using my pizza cutter. It's really handy to just slice my rolls out of the nice big piece of dough and then you just kind of roll them together. So you can decide how much you want to stretch that out. If you want a lot of layers in your sticky buns, you can do that or you can just kind of do like I did made it simple, rolled them up, and then you're going to just plop them onto your pan with your sticky bottom. Now, I'm gonna remind you, because you probably won't think about it when you first put them on there, but those things are gonna rise again another 20 minutes, so they're gonna get really big and fluffy. As you're gonna see here in a little bit, they fill that pan out. So give them a little space in between each roll. While those were rising, I went ahead and worked on my pumpkin. So I had taken this pumpkin and cut it up and just roasted it in the oven for about 40 minutes or so. And then I'm just taking my knife and cutting the rind off the outside, throwing it in my blender, and I'm just blending it up. Now, I will tell you that this is considered a rebel canning recipe because there's not been much research put into home canning pumpkin. It's not that is necessarily wrong to do. It's just that there hasn't been approval by the right people on whether or not how long you should can it, that kind of thing. I follow a Mennonite cookbook that gives me the time and the instructions on how to can pumpkin. So for pints, you're gonna pressure can it at 10 pounds pressure, depending on your altitude, so check that out, for an hour. 
So that's just the, what I follow. But before I do that, I go ahead and put this into my slow cooker. It's actually my pressure cooker, but I'm putting on the slow cooker setting and just letting some of the moisture leave the pumpkin, kind of thickening it up like you would with apple butter or apple sauce. So now my sticky buns are ready to go into the oven. They've risen and they're going to rise even more as they bake. Now while they're in the oven, I'm going to actually mix up the icing that goes on top. Yes, you heard me right. These sticky buns get iced. And I think that's why they're such a killer recipe. My mom has made these sticky buns for years for different crowds of people and different different groups of people and they are just the most famous recipe. Anybody that knows my mom, they'll say, oh, her and her sticky buns. <laughs> so I mixed up that simple icing that will be in the recipe below. And then while I was waiting for them to bake, I got into starting to make dinner. So I wanted to make a really simple lasagna. To be honest, we haven't had lasagna in a long time. So I just um, took some red sauce and I added about a cup of my homemade chicken broth to it just because I wanted the sauce to be pretty thin and runny so that it would help to cook those noodles. So while that's simmering, I pulled the sticky buns out of the oven and you let them cool for just a bit and then you're gonna start icing them. I like to kind of have them be a little bit warm just so that icing can kind of melt over the top of them. So, so yummy. So at this point, my lasagna sauce was ready to go and I just started layering it in. We like our lasagna really, really cheesy. I don't think I mentioned this, but it also got some ricotta cheese in with the pound of beef and the red sauce. And then I'm just layering in my lasagna noodles. Everybody does their lasagna different. If you have any great tips to make lasagna, like over the moon, delicious, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear how you make your lasagna or your little secret ingredients that you like to put in it. So I topped it off with some Parmesan cheese and then did a little bit of um, Italian seasoning and put that into the oven. Here I am pulling some of my canned corn out. I just plop some butter in there and warm that up. That's one of the conveniencies of having canned veggies on the shelf. And then I'm also grabbing some of my canned potatoes. I drain the liquid off and then I just put them in the pan. They're already cooked so they are tender. So all you gotta do is fry them up with some butter and seasoning and you have delicious fried potatoes. They also go really well with breakfast as well. So here we are a few hours later. You can see the consistency of that pumpkin and how wonderful it looks. It's very close to a store-bought canned pumpkin consistency. I'm canning these up in pints because I want to be able to use them in recipes where it would call for a can of store-bought pumpkin. So I wanted it to be right around the same amount so I can grab it off the shelf if I'm making pumpkin whoopie pies or pumpkin um, pie or anything. We know when fall hits, pumpkin everything, right? I'll probably even be making some pumpkin spice lattes with this canned pumpkin. So in each jar, I'm just putting about a, I forget, I think it was between a fourth and a half teaspoon of some pink Himalayan salt. Um, and then I'm just putting the lids on and I'm going to be setting it into my pressure canner. Now pr my pressure canner calls for three quarts of water in the bottom, no matter if you're doing pints or quarts. So I went ahead and added that into the bottom. I don't know all, how all pressure canners are, if some call for different amounts, but I just know that that's what mine calls for. And actually this pressure canner, you can stack pints. So if I had enough, I can put 20 pints in this one. And I love that, absolutely love that. So like I mentioned earlier, I get it up to 10 pounds pressure. You put the little weight on the top so that no more um, steam ex escapes. And then you just set your timer for an hour. When it's done, you pull it off, you let the pressure drop naturally. And then you can take your canned pumpkin out and you've got canned pumpkin on the shelf that you've done yourself, which is really, really exciting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I hope that this video inspired you. Stay tuned for my next video. I've got some fun news to share with you all. Subscribe if you're new, leave me a comment below, and I will see you guys in my next video.